Well, hello. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here from EdShed Interactive. And tonight, or this afternoon, we'll be having a, uh, a great discussion led by Marcia Downing, who takes normal activities that we do for fun and figures out how to use them as a way for learning and assessment. And, uh, and it's pretty exciting. She and I went through a number of her slides earlier this week. And I think that you're in for a really interesting session today. I will say we do have a few more EdChat interactives coming up. We have two next, well, one next week, uh, sorry, two next week, one on the 12th and one on the 13th, one on integrating art into augmented reality and the other on uh, what we've learned building immersive learning classes led by Jim Kiggins. I think that, uh, that those will both be enjoyable as well. But um, without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to, and uh, Marsha, you're unmuted, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so, um, so welcome. And uh, where, where are you coming from? I am at Virginia Beach, Virginia. And, and what's it like, um, you know, what's the virus situation in Virginia Beach? Are you all allowed out? Are you going to the beach? So here we are still at stay home orders unless you have certain things that you're supposed to do or you have papers. Uh, for me, myself, I stay home. I work from home since this has happened. And uh, the only thing that I go out and do is physical therapy and the grocery store. So <clears throat> right now we're not supposed to be out and about, but when I do go out, I do see people out. Now, most places you go to, you have to have a mask. I'm prior military and when I go on base, you can't get into the commissary without a mask on. And while you're walking around, you have to keep it on. So there are some places here to where no matter what you do, you have to have a mask. Wow. So here it's, it's, it's interesting because as I go around, I see probably 20, 25% of the people without masks. And yesterday for the first time I was walking around and I saw groups of people just hanging out on the street, most of them without masks. And it's like, you guys, you know, this is, this, this seems to be dangerous, but in any case, that's a different, that's a different topic. Um, I, my guess is that working from home the way you do, you, you've been finding that a lot of the activities that you're going to be going through with us today are also helping when you're teaching people remotely, right? Yes. What this has done for me as far as the games, the games that I'm going to show everyone today, these are games that I use in a, actually in a classroom. What I have done, I has I have just adapted it for the online session. Um, we're going to do one activity that's that you can do um, in a uh, online training class, a uh, classroom class, or virtual. So every activity that you're going to see today is going to be able to do classroom, virtual, or online. So, and that's what the discussion is. How do you take that classroom activity that is used for assessment and evaluation? And then what are some other ways we can use that instead of trying to come up with five or six activities and then have to convert them? So today we're gonna look at how can we take one or two activities and make it into five or six, yet doesn't matter how we do it, we're gonna still have an engaged us uh, participants, we're gonna have a assessment and we're gonna have evaluation. Sounds good. Okay, whenever you're ready. You're, you're, you're on. Okay, so it looks like we still have people coming in. Uh, welcome everyone, and it looks like there are a lot of people from all over the place. I think someone was on there that was from Argentina. So uh, we're gonna get a chance, we're gonna use this platform to put you guys in teams, and then as a team, you're gonna look and see where everybody is from and gonna do a little bit of networking. So today, um, I come to you, like I said earlier, from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I, I have my own consulting, Marcia's Consulting, and during the day, this is my part-time, but during the day, I do work at the Newport News Shipyard. So, but for this event, I am representing Marcia's Consulting, and my background, I have been in academia or education and anything dealing with this for over 25 years. 
And I know a lot of people, you know, they talk about what, what is your passion? My passion is learning. And it doesn't matter what package it comes in, it is learning. So as you came in, uh, Mitch put a note in the chat room to click on, you, you're able to access the handout. So there is a handout for you to use while we go through this session and while you're in your group. All right, so what are we gonna do today? Today, the expectations are one, you're gonna meet somebody new. You're gonna be able to create an assessment using a game normally just used on a sheet of paper, okay? So we're gonna take something that you use a sheet of paper with and make it engaging and exciting and assessing and evaluating. We're gonna also look at a, a short recipe for using one set of learning objectives. So you have one set of learning objectives and from that, you're gonna be able to do learning outcomes, knowledge checks, whatever you call it in your area, test questions, and you're gonna be able to do three different assessments on one set of learning objectives. And then I'm gonna give you some information about how to access some additional games and activities. So as we go through, and it looks like most of you already know the WebEx protocol, if you could just remain on mute while we're doing this, and then if you have any comments, if you can put them in the comment area, Mitch and myself will be watching that and we'll try to address them as much as possible. So what we're gonna do now is Mitch is gonna put you guys in teams. Uh, you're gonna be in teams. Of, uh, uh, so we're, what the goal is, is for 30 uh, seconds while you're in your team, what I'd like for you to do is I want you to introduce yourself and you're going to introduce yourself with your, I don't know why my slides keep going back and forth. It's like they have a mind of their own. Okay, and I don't know why it's doing that, but I want you to talk about your name, position, the state you're from, one expectation you have from this session, and then one word to describe what evaluation or assessment means to you. So okay. As you yeah. And this is new to me also. I have not broken up into teams yet, but um, I'm going to now click on this create teams button and oh so it's gonna it, it, i haven't started it yet so marcia are you ready for us to start yes what it, um if you look at your handout in your handout it tells you what how to introduce yourself and it gives you room to write down what you learn about the other people in your team so each person takes 30 seconds to do that Take 30 seconds to introduce yourself to your team. Uh, rem and one thing though, you need to select a team captain or a team lead. Your team lead is going to summarize all of that and present it to the group. So we're gonna have one person present the entire group to the session, to everyone here. So as you get into your teams, remember, talk about who you are by saying your name, what do you do, where you're from, one expectation from today, and one word to describe what assessment and evaluation means to you. If everyone takes 30 seconds, we'll get through this pretty quickly. Okay. okay. All right. So now I'm opening up the rooms, and hopefully that means that everybody is in a room. Okay, looks like every looks like all the rooms have I've closed. We're we're back. All right, welcome back. So what we're gonna do is I think we had eight teams. So if we had eight teams, what I'd like to do is I'd like for each team to report out and just to tell us this what you see on the screen. So we're gonna start with team four. All right, team four, who's your team lead? Hi, uh, I'm Richard, uh, Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Um, so uh, we uh, had uh, under overall industry demographics. Um, so we got had a bunch of people from New York. We had one from North Dakota. 
uh, one who cut off before I could find out where he's from, and I'm from Maryland. Um, some of the expectations for the team are, you know, just seeing what other people are doing, lots of just kind of ideation, reading and whatnot. Um, and then describe assessment, what evaluation means to you. We had things about what was learned, assessments, uh, mine was metrics, uh, evaluation and effectiveness. Okay, thank you. Uh, Colin, um, take two. Hey, um, we are, we were kind of all over Quebec, Texas and Florida. Um, we had an instructional designer, two professors, and um, a woman who was in business. Um, she's a game developer, so that was fun. Um, in terms of our expectations, we, I think we all settled on we want something practical. And um, when we think of um, uh, assessment, we think of being flexible, feedback, judgment, and fun. All right, thank you. Team five. I'm so not sure. That's, that's us. Um, we had about five people in ours, uh, ranging from Michigan to Texas to Florida, Berlin, um, and Virginia. We were kind of horrible with the last few questions. We didn't necessarily get to the expectation and the assessment evaluation, although Angela, she was in our, our group, she did a great job of telling us all about those questions when she, um, she was a little late to arrive because she got booted out for some reason. Um, but as far as our expectations, I mean, we talked a little bit of, you know, we're looking for stuff to help us expand what we know and being able to take some activities and turn them into assessments and evaluations um, and just kind of broaden our horizons. Okay, team one. Sorry, trying to get off mute there. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so we had um, about five people, um, Abby, Rig, Namrata, and uh, Abby and my, or Ashley and myself. Um, we had folks from, uh, a folk person from Canada, New York, I mean, sorry, New Jersey, New York, and um, North Carolina and Connecticut. Um, some of us were in education, some of us were in private, and um, there was one person that was actually uh, working for a museum. Um, expectations is um, wanting to connect and learn about and how to engage um, the person who's taking the assessment, how to um, create something valid and authentic, and um, words for assessment like improvement, effectiveness, uh, expanding knowledge, uh, uh, engagement, you know, words like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Team seven. Anybody from Team Seven? All right. What so about team, team Seven team? was Kelly, Rodrigo, and uh, Valerie. If any of you are okay, let's move on. Okay. We also we also oh. had we also had Sharon, and and, and I thought she was going to pop in. <laughs> ah, so yeah, okay. we were we were uh, we were also very East Coast. We had some Virginia, New Jersey. Um, and Argentina, so we went we went uh, international. Um, we uh, we had some people pop in and out, so we didn't get to the last question. But we had a lot of people who were doing different types of things: serious play designer, um, serious game designer. Um, I'm a gamification consultant. Uh, we had library sciences and also some compliance training. So we had a nice range of people. Uh, and But pretty much everybody was just saying that they were looking for some new experiences, new tips. Um, always, we're all we're all just the, the the big learning crowd. We just want to learn some new some new stuff. All right, team three. Team three. Okay. Oh, I'm on. I'm on team three. I'll step up. So I. Okay. I and I'll check. I think. Uh, I think I was team three. There should have been uh, Lottie Byram, Marty Donatelli, 
Dylan Grauman, is that correct? Tony Davis? Yeah, I think it was us. Okay, good. So this is gonna be very incomplete, but we had somebody from the Dominican Republic, uh, somebody born in Georgia, now at the University of Maryland, um, somebody at Victoria at British Columbia, and I am in Boise, Idaho. So we covered East and West and a little, uh, some other places in between. Um, instructional designer here, uh, a teacher in the Dominican Republic, um, the person at University of Maryland is works for the Center for Entrepreneurship at that university. And I apologize, I didn't get where Marty was, uh, what he was doing um, as a job. Uh, most of us were uh, concerned about taking something and being able to use it immediately after attending this session. And um, finding ways to help with other projects that we have going on. And I was uh, interested in finding ways to engage students in learning. And the rest of us didn't get an opportunity to talk, so I, we apologize for that. All right, and our last team, if I'm not mistaken, is three. Uh, team six. Team, si oh, team six, well, team six, go right ahead. Okay, good afternoon, we're team six. Um, industries range from educators and engineers. Most of us are in the United States. We had one from Hels Helsinki. Um, that individual was an engineer. Our expectation, we, we had virtual um, educational um, resources in the form of a virtual classroom. And we're just, we're just trying to find tools and resources to use for that one word we call understanding. All right. Well, thank you. Sorry, so, I think our team, I'm not sure we were team eight, but our team didn't go. Um, I don't know if you want me to quickly summarize. Okay, team eight. Okay, I thought team eight went, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had people from Washington State, Colorado, Washington, D.C., and Boston, Massachusetts. And we had um, paraprofessional curriculum designer, a uh, dental assistant and a re STEM researcher and evaluator. And we've had people interested in doing activities with special ed kids, incorporating um, these, the things they're learning in course design, as well as learning as much as possible to apply uh, as a dental assistant instructor. Okay, so now thank you. Thank you everyone for giving getting in your teams. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do a little assessment that you can take away immediately. So what we're going to do next, I need each of you to create three rows and three columns on a sheet of paper. Okay, once you've done that, what I'd like you to do is I want you to think about, I was gonna put you in teams for this, but we're not going back in teams for this because we're not gonna have enough time. But I want you to take two minutes and fill in each area with expectations that you heard today. Just this last wrap up, people talked about expectations, what they wanted out of this session. So what I want you to do is to not even two minutes, take about a minute and a half and write down nine things that you heard. And they have to be different. They can't be the same thing. Each block has to have something different. Okay, so what were nine expectations that you heard? You have, the clock is going. I'm gonna give you about a minute and a half.
Okay. I think everybody should probably probably be done. Another 10 seconds. All right. So what I want to do is just real quickly do a poll. And what that poll is going to do, I'm going to ask you a question, and I just want you to provide the answer if I can get up here to the poll. There we go. And if you can't, I can. Just did it. Ah. Just did it. Including my typo, right? I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> okay, I think we have a good amount of people who've taken the poll. We'll go ahead and end it. All right, so these are the results. Can you guys see the results? Okay, so what I wanna show you about this, this all this is is um, anybody from team seven, can somebody tell me what game this is? What game is this? Anybody can tell me. I, I can't see. It's too, it's too far away. We can't see it, Marsha. Okay. Well, on your paper, you did three on, on my screen. Tic -tac -toe. What does that look like? That's all it is, is tic-tac-toe. So how are we going to use tic-tac-toe to assess learning? So what we just did is we went over, if it was a class, we went over a concept. And what we did is we immediately asked, for them to regurgitate basically, what did you hear? Were you listening? So if they were listening, and it doesn't matter the topic, if they were listening, all nine of these should be filled, okay? Now we're not done though. So what we're gonna do is, thank you Dylan, <laughs> is that since all of these are filled, now what you do with it that's going to be up to you. You can do so many things with it, but what we're going to do with this one is throughout the rest of the session, if you hear any of those being said, cross it out. Okay? The first one that gets three in a row, if we were, you know, together, you get a prize. But you, we can't do a prize over here, but at least you'll get the kudos of saying, yes, you have three in a row or you can do blackout. So the first person to have remembered correctly and then listen during the session to get a blackout will win the prize. So what have we just done? We, eva we have made an assessment, are, are people listening? You've just assessed that. So now you know if they're listening because they filled it in. If they're not listening, then you have to come up with what is it that you have to do as a facilitator to get them to listen? So now you're going to evaluate them without even them even knowing that that's what you're doing because they're, they just want to play the game. They want to be the first to get tic-tac-toe. Okay, so that's one way to do it. All right. Um, so now let's talk a little bit. So how are we going to do this and how are you going to walk away today with something? Now remember, the instructions are, as we talk, cross out and see who can get tic-tac-toe or three in a row. Now, even though we did three rows, you can make this into a bingo and do five rows, four down, depending on the amount of information you're trying to get them to remember. So it just all depends and maybe the three by three this is a way to assess a chunk of information. 
And then let's say after you've done a chunk and you want to do four or five chunks, then that's when you can make it into a bingo-like game. And the first to get bingo anyway, or add as an X, and you play it just like if you were in the bingo hall. And what will happen is they are going to pay attention to what you're saying because they want to win the game. Okay? All right. So let's continue. So build engagement and assess it, assessment without sacrificing learning. That sounds like it is not fun at all, right? So how do you build something and you make it fun and engaging? So part of it is going to be you, the facilitator. You're going to have to really love the topic you're talking about. If you love the topic you're talking about, you've already got them to listen to you because they, they want to hear it. But if you have a boring topic, you have to say, okay, how am I going to get them to really like this topic? So based on that, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to build engagement with that thought process. First, you need to know what are you trying to assess, okay? If you're just trying to assess a chunk of information, a three by three will work. If you're trying to assess um, a procedure or a, um, let's say something is procedure driven and you need them to know all of the procedure in a precise manner, three by three may not be the one you want to use. You're going to have to think of something else. By the so, way, I just, I do want to say it looks like we have a winner. Do we have a winner? Yes. So, who went on to get to? Yes. Three in a row. All right. Way to go. Now let's see if we can get a cover off. Okay, so now if you're just trying to just uh, um, figure out whether are they in the right class, have you ever had a class or a session and about 10 minutes in somebody gets up and they leave because they're like, oh, I'm in the wrong session. Okay, so this is one way to make sure in the very beginning you have address that this is what because you know sometimes you can say the title of what you're doing and they're still sitting there so now you're going to go over expectations you're going to go over objectives like what we did in the beginning and then that way you'll be able to find out are they in the right place are the people in the audience there with the right mindset so sometimes you have to make people understand that you do realize that um, this was the objective of it this is what we're here to do. And then that way, there's no one in there with false expectations, okay? You can use it as a quiz. You can use it as test questions. So I'm gonna show you how to use it as a quiz and test questions towards the end. And then that's more of a computer game and I'm gonna walk you through it. Know your audience. Who are you talking to? So tic-tac-toe, that's for any age, okay? But it's how you play it that's going to appeal to the audience. Believe it or not, when I do adult education and we play tic-tac-toe, they are so excited because what we use is, we don't use markers, okay? We use candy, all right? So they can't eat the candy until we're finished with the game. So it makes it fun and engaging because they are able to do what? Enjoy, listen, play a game, and eat candy. Small incentives. So know your audience when you're picking the game. Create a knowledge check, a check on learning, which can be used in different learning environments. So what we just did is I just did a quick one on how do you know whether your audience is listening to you and whether they understood and took in what you said or what they heard. And that's what this particular one did. So before I move on to the next one, are there any questions that I can answer now before we move on to the next topic? Mitch, were there any questions? Yes, there was one question, which is how would you use that tic-tac-toe at the end? So I'm gonna show you, I can't tell you now. That's but what I'm I thought. Show you how we're That's what I thought. Use it at the end. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No, that was the that was the question. 
Okay. All right. So hopefully you can see this. And for my instructional designers, this is not a very, this is not a slide that we would show in a class, okay? <laughs> this is only for this example, but if it was a presentation, this is not what we would do. Okay, so what I did is I created 10 questions, and these questions just are just around evaluation and assessment. Uh, the way that I normally use it, we weren't able to do it in this environment, but I'm going to show you how to take just this. So let's say this is your test. You have a 10 question test. How can you do this, evaluate and assess without actually them knowing they were evaluated or assessed and you just want to do a pre-test? All right. So the way that you would use these 10, and if you have the handout, which was in the chat area, if you have the handout, you should be able to see these. Okay, so one thing is as an introduction. In a couple of the sessions that I do, I do uh, index size cards. And for this particular exercise, you would have 20 index size cards. What you would do on one card, which if you notice here, it has the number seven. Can, Dylan, can you tell me why I used the number seven and 15 on these cards? I'll be honest, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing your screen. I'm trying to follow along, but I'm trying to see what you're talking about, but I'm only able to see about the lower left quarter of it. I can see oh. characteristic of formative assessment. Okay, assessment you, okay, you might be able to, um, go to the view options and uh, change it instead of oh, original right, size right, to fit right. to window. Yep, yep, good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're wondering why you picked uh, 7 and 15? Why are 7 and 15 on the card? Well, I'm hoping that 7's on there because that's my favorite number and 15 is <laughs> yours and we're going to be working together on this. Okay, so, um, so uh, Angela, what do you, why do you think 7 and 15 are on there? I can't hear you. You're on mute. Maybe the lucky seven and um, 15. I'm not sure about 15. Okay, Miss Valerie, is it Valerie? Miss Valerie. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stumped too. I'm, I'm, um, okay. I know there's so 20 I'm total, seven. so I'm, I'm, I don't know. The reason why is because number seven is the question. Number seven is the question and 15 is going to be the answer. So uh, it should have been 17, but we're going to pretend it was. So what it is, is you're going to create an answer card and a question card. Okay. The way you're going to use it, we're going to use it. If, if you use this, you're going to use it as an introduction activity. So how we were all in teams when you first came, when, when we did our first exercise, the way you would do this is if at, when anybody walks in the room, they get a card, okay? Everybody walks in, they get a card. And what they have to do, they have to find the match to their card, all right? So if I say, if my card said characteristic of formative assessment, then that person has to walk around the room and find the person that has the answer or that characteristic, okay? So you make enough of these for the whoever, all the participants are there. Now, when you do that, there are gonna be some things that are happening because you're doing this in the very beginning. Before I share what it is, I wanna ask a few, um, I'm gonna ask a few of you, what, how does this, what purpose does this have by doing it like that and in the very beginning? Um, Donna, what do you think? I think it does two things. One, it lets everybody get to know each other. And two, it takes the burden off of individual people. You're not calling them out in class. They can work together almost to figure out who belongs with who. So the people who may not have an understanding will walk away with that understanding, hopefully, when 
when the exercise is completed. Okay. Um, Abby, what do you think? Um, I, I thought similar to Donna with, um, with where you're walking around and talking to other people and asking what their card says and then being able to figure out like, okay, there are three that maybe sound like they're a definition or match um, and narrowing it down through talking to them. Okay. And I'm going to ask Rodrigo, what do you think? What are, what are some other things you think we can do with this? Bob. I've done in the past something uh, probably a little bit similar, which was uh, having different, slightly differences in between the definition and the question. So it's not that easy to get a direct match one to each other. So that opens, a, 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 let's say, a, a different conversation in terms of if you selected, let's say, seven instead of, uh, sorry, eight or six or five instead of seven, which are um, in the line, but not exactly the response, then you have an additional way to, let's say, to gather the specific knowledge you were looking for. So I love okay. this one. Okay, thank you. So let, let me tell you a little bit about the numbers. The numbers are on there because as the facilitator, you probably have a lot of questions and answers in your head. And you're not gonna, you may not know right off the answer to the question. So you're gonna have a cheat sheet that's gonna have all of the numbers. So when someone says, hey, we've got a match, and you ask them what are the numbers, the numbers have to match on your sheet. If the numbers don't match, guess what? They have to go find their match. So that's one. It's also done that way because what if a facilitator can't be there to facilitate that class? Your substitute may not know your material like you do. So this gives them a way to still run the activity and still do it effectively with the instructions that they're provided. Okay? Another thing is, if you have a class that has a whole bunch of definitions, right? And you don't have a lot of time, this is a way to get it out the way. You've done the introductions at the same time because what happens is once they find their match, they're going to introduce each other to the class. So now you've gotten the introductions away, out the way, and you've gotten the definitions out the way, okay? So what we've done is we have assessed our audience, all right? So now you know who's in the room and you can create you're, and you can maybe, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you make a, uh, you prepare something and then next thing you know, your audience changed and you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? So this way, guess what? You know who your audience is and it gives you an opportunity to maneuver around whatever it is you want to get done. So this is how this introduction activity is done. One, you, everyone gets a card. Two, they find their match. Three, they introduce each other. Four, you have now assessed the audience and you have evaluated the knowledge that they know. You also introduced a part of the lesson that you can now start talking about without having to define fully, okay? Any questions or comments about this before we move on to another way to use those 10 questions? Do we have anybody, Mitch? No, but uh, I guess one of the things that, that I've been searching my mind is, is a, what type of a similar activity one could do if your class is online? And I haven't really come up with something because um, I guess you could have them go to another website, but you can't have them mix as well online, right? So one way, and uh, we could have, we didn't do it here because we didn't quite know who was coming and who wasn't. So one way to do this is um, when, when you got into your teams, I could have said, uh, team one, you have number seven on the table. Team two, you have number six on the table. So when you introduced yourselves and after you introduced yourselves, team one could have said, um, my term is 
uh, my card says to improve learning and achievement. So after they introduced themselves, whatever team had characteristic of formative assessment, then they would go next into introducing themselves. So that's one way to introduce this particular, this card activity online or in a virtual environment. See, and here I, I thought I was, I was coming up with my own question and I look ahead, I look up and Natalie had asked that question. So maybe, I, maybe I saw her question without even thinking of it, but thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, does anyone else have a way that we can introduce this online? There's a great comment from Alan. He was, said he had a person teaching a film course who did this matching game using the jobs on a film set. Each person received either a job like director, gaffer, executive producer, et cetera, while others had the definition of that job. They found each other and then introduced each other for the rest of the class. Exactly. Um, and then Brandon said, you could assign each student card and then they have to go figure out as a class um, who, uh, who's got, got the card. And, uh, exactly. Yes. The matching card. Yes. And then it could be used as a memory game that mm -hmm. doesn't matter. That's not as much people introducing ourselves. Yeah, there's actually the, the chat's going by too fast for me to read them out loud. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, right. so everybody just look at the chat because you guys are a lot smarter than I am. Okay, so that was, so that was one way to do it. You can also use it as a pre and post assessment. So what we did with the event, with the tic-tac-toe, which you can't see from on my screen, but what you can do is you can have them place an item in each uh, area, or you can have it pre-populated. You can have it pre-populated, and then as you go through the class, see who can um, either get three in a row or two, two in a row or a blackout. And that's how you can use it um, as a pre-assessment. Another way to use it as a pre-assessment is to have them complete it like I had you do. You can have them come in and say, okay, we're gonna do a quick review about what we talked about yesterday. So you're gonna have them think of nine things that we talked about, and then you put them in there. Another way to do it is you can take those 10, pick nine, and just put the question, okay? And as you go through the class and you talk about it, they have to, hit it when they've heard the answer, okay? So that is another way that you can do it as a pre. To do it as a post, this is how you would do it. So you can't see it, but um, you would do it as a, as a way to wrap up, like how I'm gonna do it. We're gonna wrap up the class and talk about, did I meet the expectations of the class? Were they met? And as we do this, we're gonna cross out all the expectations. If we've crossed out everything, expectations have been met. If we haven't crossed it out, then it tells me that there's something we have to go over. We go over it and we've met all the expectations of that particular session. And that's how you would use it as a post. You can use it as a post the same way we did the pre, give them, uh, after you've done the whole class, all you're doing is swapping it, you tell them, now write nine things that we've learned. Nine terms that we've learned. Then you take your answer sheet and you say, this is the, you give them the definition. And once you give them the definition, they have to cross out the word. So that's another way that you can see, did they get it? And that's how you can do the post. Um, the last thing that I want to show you is how do we, oh, do I, did I put up the wrong one? Oops, give me a second. I think I, um, let, me, let me take that off of there. Hmm? Yes. Okay, so the last thing I want to go over with you is um, how do you do what I just showed you virtually in a classroom, so what we're about to do, you can do it virtually, you can do it in a classroom, and you can even put this 
in a captivate online course you just have to know the the um the code and how to actually set it up and the different things that captivate so let's say dylan and tony dylan and tony so you're gonna play tic-tac-toe all right uh dylan you go first what question do you want all things, uh, thank you, so kind. Uh, all things have led me to believe to start in the middle, but I'm gonna go with uh, Q7, please. Okay, you click on Q7. Okay, so the question pops up. Process of gathering and discussing information from multiple and diverse sources. You know the answer to that? I'm gonna go process of gathering and discussing information from multiple, uh, I would guess research process of gathering and discussing information from multiple diverse sources. So let me finish reading the question since it all couldn't fit. It says from so, multiple and not research. diverse, <laughs> it might help, uh, <laughs> multiple and diverse sources in order to develop a deep understanding of what students know, understand, and can do with their knowledge as a result of their educational experiences. The process culminates when assessment results are used to improve subsequent learning. Well, that's, that's quite a large definition. Uh, so I, I didn't catch all of it, but I, I'm going uh, uh, process of gathering and discussing information from multiple resources with students. Okay, you want, Dylan? Uh, evaluation, we'll go with evaluation. Okay, yeah, it's, a, it's assessment, but we can do evaluation. Assessment, great. Great. Okay, so are you X or O? Uh, I got <laughs> I'm in a loop right now. I'm, I'm an O. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give it to him, but what I want to show you what happened is if he did not get that correct, we would say no and the question disappeared. But because he got it do correct, that. That's okay. <laughs> when he got it correct, he said he was O. Look at what happens. Okay, right. Tony? Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Good luck, Tony. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, okay, so I think my, my, I was thinking about focus groups and really just getting people together to, in that process and, and working through that process. Okay. See what that would be and understanding the knowledge that they have just in that type of group. Right, well, I need you to pick a question. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go with the middle, Q5. Okay, the three key elements of assessment for learning. Uh, and what I was going to say, what team are you on, Tony? I think I'm on eight. I mean, the no, um, the gentleman who just spoke. Oh, you y'all on the same team? <laughs> yes. I remember him in the video chat, so because I couldn't talk to anyone. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so what I was going to do, your lifeline is team oh he said you might have been three but your team is your lifeline okay so if you can't get the question right you can see if your team can help you okay so the three key elements of assessment for learning okay well i, I barely got this thing working on my phone so okay. team go ahead and do this <laughs> anybody the three key assessments for learning. Yeah. First one's assess. Yes, you are correct. First one is assess. Is diagnose in there? Yep, diagnose is in there and it's oh, one boy. more. Remediate. Remediate, exactly. Remediate. All right, so um, we don't have time to go through the whole game, but you can see how this <laughs> would work, right? You're seeing you see how this one plays out, work. aren't you? <laughs> yes, so, so now, and all you do is you go through it, and then what happens is when I play this game, it is amazing how competitive and they become strategists. They start looking at, wait a minute, which one, okay, how can I, and I'm thinking, I'm like, this is only tic-tac-toe, but it is engaging and it is fun and it is exciting to see them get excited over tic-tac-toe. So when they, when you click it, they're strategic on when they're placing it. And when they answer that question, and we normally try to do teams 
And when they say, don't answer, that's not the answer. They're making sure that whoever answers is the team lead and that's the right answer because they don't want to lose, okay? So um, that's what we have for uh, my time. Is, it's like I'm at the two minute mark, <laughs> so. And, and I, I just want to make sure that, you, and did you set this up in PowerPoint? That, that yes, game? I set this up in PowerPoint. So, so this is all something you can do in PowerPoint. You could probably figure out a way to do it in Google Slides as well. Yes, it's, it's in PowerPoint. And I can give that to you if you want it since it's already done. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. If, yeah, if you give it to me, I'll, I'll put it in the Dropbox and make a link to it. Okay, so that was the last uh, question, the last thing I wanted to talk about. I do want to do one last poll, and that's the ending poll, and to see um, if you've gotten anything. And while you do the poll, what I want to do is I want to go back and recap for expectations. Okay, now to see if expectations was met. This is how, this is one way you can do it. One thing we did in the beginning, we went over and we wrote down what people expected. So even though you can't see me cross it out, I'm gonna say it so you know what I'm doing. Okay, so one of the expectations was to be able to apply what you've learned immediately. Okay, and I think if you take what we've done, you should be able to go back and use one of these activities to actually begin evaluating and assessing. Uh, and assessments, you have learned a little bit about assessments. We haven't done metrics, uh, but we can, you can take some of this and get metrics, especially if you're doing pre and post evaluations. You can do one of those pre and determine uh, where they were and then a post to determine where they are at the end, okay? Uh, project assistance, you may have been able to uh, listen to someone, meet someone in your room to where they can assist you. We talked about metrics. Engagement, this is engaging because if you notice, even those on the Zoom were able to get engaged and get involved in it. We talked about okay, virtual, can we use this in a virtual environment? Everything Everything that you saw today, you can use, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's online. Another one is um, evaluation. You can connect, you can, can engage. It's gonna be authentic because you are going to create it using the objectives of your class or of your whatever it is, you're going to use the objectives. And I think that you did get some new tips and some new experiences. So what I'd like to know, um, what I'd like to uh, end with is thank you. Everyone felt as the 19 that answered, felt as though um, they have learned how to use games. And if you're interested in more, I'm gonna I do short, short of these, and it's gonna go over some other tools. Uh, one thing I do wanna share is that if you all have ever heard of theagi.com, Theagi.com, T-H-I-A-G-I.com. He's great. Go he's on. fantastic, isn't he? Awesome. If you've never heard of him, go check out his website. And he has thousands of games that you can go and use and you can recreate as. Now, uh, a lot. another thing you can do is what I want you to think about. I used something simple as tic-tac-toe, okay? Three in a row, because we don't want any infringements on names. Mm -hmm. What we also do, what I've also done, is I've created, whether it's a bingo, whether it's something like Jeopardy, and even Family Feud, okay? So you can take those, and you can take these same 10 questions and do the exact same thing. So what I recommend is if you want to be able to evaluate and assess, is to make sure you know the topic, you have the questions and the answers, and then create a game that is fun, engaging, and then you take that one thing and do three or four different things with it. And then that way, they aren't getting bored and they will stay engaged. Any questions, feedback, or comments? I think people have really enjoyed this. And you're going to be giving even more examples when uh, Series Play has their live 
Yes. You know, so uh, so if people are registered or if people can register for the Serious Play Conference, they'll uh, they'll get more from you. Yes. And yes. if they want to get in contact with you, uh, it's right up there. I put it on the slide. Great. Okay. So yeah. It's there. Thank you. This was uh, it, um, these were some really interesting ways of assessing people in in a much more fun way than um, than what I think we're, we've all we've all been used to. And I guess some people have tried a couple of these in the in the past, but uh, the way you presented them was was really quite um, quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. All right, so um, I'll just sign off then. This is Mitch Weisberg. Uh, actually, before I do that, Marcia, can you stop sharing your screens for a second? Sure. And that way we can, uh, and, uh, and I'll sign off. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Marcia, thank you thank very you. much. I'll, I'll see you online at, um, at the Serious Play Conference. And yes. hope everybody can come to another EdChat Interactive next week or, or sometime between now and the end of June. Good afternoon, everybody. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for the pleasure.